So I'm back, and because my life has been a bit dull and effeminate for the last couple of weeks, I decided I need some more of the manliest Hearthstone deck in creation. Now, I pretty much haven't played at all since I made the last video, for reasons, but somehow I've gone down six ranks. So I have, I have a couple of theories as to how this has occurred, for most of which is that Blizzard saw my video and realized how ridiculously overpowered the Manly Premix deck is. So they dropped me down to rank 23 in a vain attempt to prevent me from reaching legend rank and wreaking abominable havoc on its population with what is undoubtedly going to be the Hearthstone equivalent of the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. But I digress. I've made or I feel I need to make a couple of changes to the deck first because upon thinking about it in a bit more detail it doesn't actually seem to be as manly as it could possibly be conceivably. So a couple of obvious, wait that's the wrong one, this one, a couple of obvious changes to make. First of all we need another Ogre War more. I mean let's be honest with ourselves this is probably the manliest thing ever, okay? Not only is the card art incredibly red, I mean shit, but it also has maths in the card function, so there's that, right? The flavor text has the word dangerous in it, and in addition to this, this is like a card that doesn't take shit from no one, right? So you tell Ogre Warmore, listen, I want you to attack his face, but Ogre Warmore thinks to himself, you know what, fuck you! He's actually got some minions on the field, and everybody knows you have to clear the board in order to be successful in this game. Or, the converse of that, if you've got some minions on the board, Ogre Warmall thinks to itself, you know what, this noob is attacking the minions on the board, obviously the correct way to win at Hearthstone is to attack their face with your face. So, Ogre Warmall tells you what to do. Ogre Warmall is effectively counter misplays, and because it's just such a self-righteous badass motherfucker that tells you how to play Hearthstone instead of the other way around. I think it's pretty much the manliest card conceivable. So yeah, I definitely need another one of those in my deck. First we have to remove some nonsense. Most obvious choice would be Cleave, for two reasons. First of all, the card art is green and not red. So yeah, there's that. But in addition to that, it's like using a spell to do damage, which is kind of like the sissy cop-out way of doing damages. I mean, I'm not a fucking mage. If I'm going to be doing damage, I need to do it with my damn face. So yes, need to get rid of the cleaves. I would apply the same logic to Mortal Strike, but holy shit, look how red that card art is. Nope, you can stay in my deck. So, goodbye cleave. I'm going to replace you with an Ogre Warmore. And I think also a Black Knight. Now, I don't really like the Black Knight because, you know, it's viable. It actually has, you know, value and function even if it's not consistent, but it's actually a good card. So that sounds like a bit of horseshit to me. However, I seem to run into an uncanny number of Sunwalkers all the goddamn time, and playing the Black Knight on a Sunwalker is like slapping your opponent in the face with your penis. So you may get into my deck. Now, there's one more change I had to make. Uh, and I think that is some fucking pirates, because pirates are manly. I mean, an extensive amount of research has gone into the fact that pirates are manly, so I'm not going to explain exactly why that is the case. So let's have a look at some of those. Yeah, this one. Okay, so Dread Corsair, costs one less per attack your weapon. Considering this is a deck made out of weapons, this is effectively a zero mana cost 3-3, three, three, right? So it's three damage, plus three health, so it's effectively 6 damage for 0 mana. So it's like 2 inner rages in a single card. So if I put both of these in my deck, I will effectively have 6 inner rages in total. And that sounds like an enormous profit to me. I've already explained why inner rage is the best card in the game. Uh, in addition to that, when you play Dread Corsair, he says blood and plunder. And blood is the third reddest thing in the history of the universe, after tomatoes and the Roman Empire. So, definitely need a couple of those. Gonna get rid of these two things, because I've already got charge, and charge's card art is much more manly and impressive. So yeah, 
in go the dread corsairs and i do believe we are ready to go okay uh once again never ever ever play casual mode because casual mode is for casuals don't need to go into detail about that <sighs> right and off we go my body is ready well, i can't say the same for the poor sod who is about to be on the receiving end of a massive dick slap in the forehead let's just hope that a my internet doesn't disconnect in the middle of this because that does tend to happen because i have a wood pc and b that I don't run out of hard drive space while recording this video because that is also a legitimate concern. But, ah, it'll probably be fine. That sounds like a problem for future me. Whatever. Okay, you can tell by the sudden frame rate lag that a reckoning is imminent. 25 different ranks to earn in rank mode and above those the legend rank. Well, they say they're 25 ranks, but I've only, I only have first-hand evidence of about eight of them so yeah let's just <laughs> let's just work with what we've got for now but I imagine that whoever I wind up against is gonna have a pretty rough time because if they're at rank 23 well let's say I'm rank 23 right? so there's probably two kinds of people who are at rank 23 at this time of the month all the tryhards who are at low ranks tend to be at those low ranks at the beginning of the month and then rank up to try hard zone around you know rank six and rank seven and whatnot so chances are the only people left down here are extreme noobs and people who are just very very lazy and stupid and my deck is the hard counter to both of those well that is a fucking fantastic hand right there but i think i would derive more value out of these if they can come as a kind of a surprise motherfucker situation later on in the game what's this some kind of timer Never seen that before. Uh, maybe my connection is poor after all and it was taking a while to get into the game. Anyway, go hall, inner rage. Oh, okay, we have half the combo. We have half the combo. All we need now is a doomsayer. But since I have fiery war axe in my opening hand, I cannot possibly lose. I mentioned this before. It's called fiery win axe for a reason. If it is in your opening hand, that's immediate GG. Especially against a rogue. Uh, in fact, especially against literally every class in the game. So, time to begin. As I mentioned before, the psychological game, most important. So, now, upon doing 3 damage to his face on turn 1, he has probably shat in his pants. Uh, and we'll see the response to this as soon as my internet starts behaving. But, fortunately, we are playing against someone who has a 6 in his name. I'm going to try and figure out how this is intended to be pronounced. Is it Neck Crown? That sounds like the sort of edgy thing that people who play this game are typically responsible for. But on the other hand, it could also be the Six Crown. It sounds considerably more delightful to me. On another matter, we have obtained the Ogre Warmore. So, as our, first, as our second card. So yeah, it's pretty much impossible to lose at this point. And He's provided me a delightful target for my infinite value. And it seems like it's time to just continue fucking shit up. What's that? 6 HP down. Turn 2. Pants. Brown. In the 6th crown, your time is numbered. Your days are numbered, your time is limited. That was a fucking weird sentence. Anyway, I think everybody took my meaning. Yes, come on you slut. What are you going to play? It's just my internet being a shitty again, isn't it? And my frame rate apparently. I bet I'm about to run out of hard drive space. Yeah, that seems plausible. Well, it was fun while it lasted, but I suppose we'll just have to assume that I'm going to win this game. Because it looks like... Mind if I roll oh, me? No, it's come back. Maybe I haven't run out of hard drive space yet. Okay, well I think the solution to this is pretty obvious. Come on, you can do it. Why is the signal here so abominable? It was perfectly fine last week. Whatever. It's just allowing me, so my internet is inadvertently giving me the opportunity to wait longer for the sake of the psychological game. So he's going to think to himself, wow, this motherfucker has quite some kind of impressive cunning plan. 
and he's taking time to formulate the exact strategy, and therefore the six Khan is about to have a shitty time. You see, obviously that was the right choice because the Ogre Warmore didn't decide for me that I had attacked the wrong thing. So I'm pretty confident about the way this is going. Also, shit, upgrade Ogre Warmore is going to have an extra charge, and then we will be like, in ter if if I could quantify value in terms of numbers. We would be 800,000 times more valuable than he is currently, and therefore losing is utterly impossible. All we need to do is not disconnect before the end of this game, and then we win by default. Because there's just insufficient manliness on that side of the board in order to contend with this. Yes, so the Ogre Warmall is now literally an Arcanite Reaper except with more red and more decisive ability to determine whether you're doing the right thing or not. He is now, in theory, sub 20 HP and it's only turn 5, so I do not favor the 6 of Trump's chances of not walking away from this little painful asshole. You see, it could either be taking long because my internet is still shitty, or it could be taking long because I've just demonstrated to him the size of my penis and he simply has no way to deal with that. He's suddenly become fundamentally insecure in his manliness, which anybody would upon facing down an Ogre Warmore that's been upgraded. But oh, it looks like he's, he's come to a decision. He's, he's going to try his best to claw his way back into this game. But, alas, he doesn't realize that it's just impossible. So, he's doing damage to my face. Because, you see, obviously those cards were intended to be removal. Ah, oh, infinite value! Blood and blood. Oh, the combos. Yes, he clearly had a fair amount of removal in his deck. And since my deck is weapon focused, it tends to hard counter removal. So... Yeah, there's, there continues to be no way that he could possibly win. Again, my internet has just decided to kind of drag things out for dramatic purposes in order to maintain the side game, just in case I forget you myself. It's got my back like that. Just like the Ogre Warmall always decides whether or not I'm attacking the correct thing. Apparently I have been attacking the correct thing. So... Ogre Wormall is indicating to me that this game is in the bag. Provided we don't disconnect at the last minute. Although if I do disconnect, I imagine that the Six Crown would probably go home and commit suicide because he knew that he was destined for death anyway and to win in the fashion of waiting for me to disconnect would probably just be too dishonorable for him and he would have no way of dealing with that. So for some reason I clicked and told to attack but because my PC is made out of dog shit nothing happened. And the Six Crown is deriving some value out of his removal which is probably gonna work in my favor because it's going to lull him into a false sense of security to think that he actually has a chance of winning this game. So. Let's just attack and allow the Ogre Warmall to carry us through. Provided the internet agrees that this is a decent idea. Well, let's see what happens. Even if I should happen to disconnect or lose as a result of poor internet connection, well, I will have one in spirit and the Six Crown will be aware of that. And uh, out of respect, I'd imagine that he'll probably never play Hearthstone again for he will have witnessed the best game in history. Okay, come now. Enough fucking around. Go hit the damn thing, damn it. Maybe I should click on end turn, just to remind the game that it's actually got what shit now? to do. My internet seems to have some kind of will of its own. It works perfectly fine when I don't actually need it. But as soon as something competitive Pleasure. takes place, it decides to be a bitch. See, again, with not attacking. You know what? 
Maybe it has my best interests at heart. Maybe it is waiting for the most opportune moment to allow me to use the Ogre War Mall. So it's waiting until he is on precisely 5 HP so that I might finish him off with the Ogre War Mall. Like now, for instance. So I have sufficient weapon damage in my hand to murder him. I think I'm just going to play the panda. Because uh, the chances of me getting the Doomsayer combo next turn are probably minuscule. So I'll just put that down there to distract him, and then I'm going to hit him in the face for 7. And he's going to rethink his entire life. Seems that my internet has resumed its connection to some degree. So obviously, destiny is on our side. We can no longer possibly lose this game. The distraction is working perfectly. Okay. Now, <laughs> there's a cunning plan if ever I've seen one. Return the return to my hand to my hand. Well, at least he's enabled to do a air combo. Should I happen to draw that this turn? Nope. Oh well. We we basically have lethal. I haven't done the math. I just trust in the fact that it is now impossible for him to win this game. Yeah, see seven damage, ten minus seven equals zero, as we're all aware. The the game has just decided to allow him to live for another turn for the sake of magnificent BM, so that I might finish him off with a gore hull to his face. Because that would truly be the most majestic thing conceivable. Also, if that ain't the manliest panda I've ever seen, well, shit. Oh, so we finally get some value out of his removal. But I don't think it's going to help. Since the Six Crown is obviously a 14-year-old slut, he, she probably doesn't have any taunts in his deck, prefers to put in things like head crack and these spellomancer motherfuckers and whatnot. So, I have absolutely no doubt, not that I ever did, that this game is in the bag. Ah, ah. Now the question is this: Do we attack him with the fiery war axe for precisely lethal? I mean, it is called the fiery wind axe, so it would be fairly appropriate to win with it. Or do I apply as much overkill as possible with the Gohal? You know what? Gohal just doesn't see enough play. Seven is a is a cool as shit number. A giant seven damage weapon to the face. It just sounds too manly to me. So yeah, I've made my plan. Now I'm going to. BM him, BM him by armoring up and hopefully the internet will come back and allow me to win this game but if it doesn't it'll probably result in me having to take an extra turn which will just be kind of like inadvertent lag BM and I'm perfectly okay with that so yeah destiny is in the bag it is only a matter of time until this deck reaches legend rank and then the meta will never be the same again. There will be tears everywhere, careers will be ruined, epiphanies will be had, and the future will be uncertain. But we can only wait for such a glorious day to come. Well, since I've got nothing better to do, I guess I might as well click on things. Ah, fuck you, window. Yeah, that's what I thought. Looking at me all smug like that. Please, my internet being shit. Yeah, I'm just gonna break shit. Maybe it'll come back. Come now, Dorothy. This is unacceptable behavior. I've always... Ah, there we go. Huh? Well, that was a bit weird. Okay, well, hopefully he still doesn't have any taunts in his deck. And I think it's unlikely that he possesses the capability to do 10 damage to me in this turn. But if he does, that would probably be quite hilarious for him. Ah, there we go. Uh, you know what? Wait, this is probably a poor decision. But whatever. Fucking YOLO. 
It's fine. I'm sure the, the Ogre Warmer will carry me to victory. You see? The Ogre Warmer can never lie. Game successful. Second game in a row of Manly Pemix winning. I think we can therefore via extrapolation suggest that this is the greatest deck in the world and it is completely invincible. The evidence speaks for itself so I will allow you now to recognize that it is time for you to as well begin playing this deck and I think my time is done. Thank you.